Topography, the arrangement of natural and artificial physical features in an area. Hi, welcome back to Holton Warren 009, I'm Mark. Yeah, topography, where did that come from? Um, I was editing the recent video on the Helix and at the end of that video I was saying about what the plans were next and that was to start planning this area on the, the layout. And I'd slipped in the word topography and that's not a word I have consciously used or even thought about since I was at school. So, but thinking about it, it's what we do, isn't it? We are making model railways, we're developing scenery that go on there, and it is the natural and the artificial features that are in that area that we plan, that we want to put in, that, we, you know, that give us the joy of what our model railway is. It's our tiny little world that we live in, work in, and build, and construct, and dream about, and hide away in, I suppose. But yeah, it seemed quite apt, and why I use the word, I've got no idea. Anyway, so what's going to be the topography for Holton Warren? So this here is part of the railway that I've obviously start scenic in, and is that word scenic in? Putting the scenery on anyway. And it was a bit of a rush job, and I was doing a bit of railway, doing the scenery, doing a bit more. And anyway, I've changed my plans, and um, as you know, I've decided to get all the track work in, up and running. Uh, before I continue with the scenery but now I'm planning what I want to do over here I've got to kind of blend in everything so I've already got hills here I've got a valley with the river running in and the railway running along the edge of the hills here so I want to kind of carry that along now I know I definitely want a hill in the background here and that will probably have a town and a road on it and that will come down probably so all in the planning stage. This here, where the track is, and it opens up, this is going to be the station. And then I'm not sure what to do. I can either bring this back up to join on here, so that's like a hill in here, or I can do it the other way. I can make this an open planned or open uh, baseboard with the track kind of, kind of on piers, and then it come down. Now I did think about another river here, but then how did it join up with the original one over here? Unless, and going back to my old geography days, we put an oxbow lake in there, but I think that's a waste of space. I want that to, might want that to come down. Then I want some kind of road to come down, either over the top or underneath, and some bridges. It's all in the planning stage, but this is what I'm thinking of. Right, so that's the station end. What about this end up here, which is going to be the estate manager's yard? Obviously, the actual yard itself should be fairly level. The last thing we want is an unbraked coach or wagon to suddenly start making its own way off down the tracks and then disappearing. So that would be fairly level. I had thought about taking out this area, sawing out that area, and having open baseball, so again, I could make it go one way or the other. Um, the track here goes down through this, the back here. Uh, like in a cutting if you like and that joins up with the helix so I could have that going down to the helix uh, the track for the helix and have it like a valley in the background and then molding it up to try and get a bit of interest but I think that look slightly strange with that flat and that going down more off more the way I'm thinking is to go flat and then up so and then cut it here with maybe an embankment or a retaining wall just so it looks like it's been carved out the hillside the other thing is this area here, as we've said before, sits on top of the helix. That is going to be slightly higher than this baseball down here. So um, I've got to also do a slight slope up there. If I can just bring the camera down the attach, you can see here we've got a step. That's about an inch. And then this track here has got to go from the station baseboard up to the estate manager's yard baseboard. Now that at the moment is about 400, 600 millimetres. Now whether I can get a nice enough slope on there for the engines to be able to negotiate, I'm not so sure. As I was saying in the previous video, and my tripod's got stuck here somewhere. Okay, I might have to bring this point down to this corner and then have it coming off here. This will give me another 300 millimetres or so to join on. So making that almost a metre from that from the point there to here, which at 2% should give me about 
a 20 millimeter rise almost about three quarters of an inch or so so that might just be enough to actually cope with that but as I said before I'd rather that point be here because it just looks nicer and I think it's more uh, yeah it's just more efficient to have it there rather than down the bottom but we'll see how things go so that's kind of the the ground level we've got it coming flat here it drops down slightly there so we need an incline coming up to it an incline at the back and then at the station end which is just to our left that's where we have the hill with either the railway running on the hillside or going down into a valley all to be sorted out I think the first thing to do is get this board here sorted out and then I'll know exactly what the drop is and then I can work out what the levels are going to be and what I need to do where to get it all leveled out Right, artificial physical features, the track, which is probably the main item on here. So the track comes will be coming out through this cutting. It will follow this line through and then into the station where it splits into this passing loop. Now my plan is not to have two platforms but only one platform. Um, as I said in a previous video, the idea is this one train will come in and it might be an hour or two hours later when another train comes into the platform. So if there's only one train in, a plat in the station at any one time, why go to the expense of doing two platforms in supposed real life? So this line here is just a passing loop. So I can bring in a passenger train and then if there's a goods train coming from the other direction, he can pull around and go off or he can wait there until the passenger train arrives. Just adds a bit more interest. Okay, so once the passengers have offloaded, they come through here. Um, the rails join again by that um, point. Then the second point splits them out again and they can either go off down to the helix or this is uh, Holton's and Barnabas which is a going to be a hidden siding anyway just for again more operational interest. Now I've done the points this way instead of putting one here so you get one line there and one line here with a crossover because I want the train from here to be able to come in and go onto that line or that line and I want the one from here to be able to come out and go on that one and that one and by putting that point here this wouldn't have worked. Right, so the other thing here is this point, and as I've just said when we were talking about the natural part of the landscape, we've got this step, which is just on about here, this line here, and this has got to be long enough to be a gradient up to it. So at the moment I'm planning on putting the point here, and just hope that is. If it isn't, that point is going to have to move further down the line, and to about here. So that we now have an extra foot or three, uh, 30 centimetres and that will in give us a better gradient. The only problem with putting that point down here is that trains coming from that direction will come through and be able to come up to the estate manager's office. Trains coming down that way would have to then go past the loop, past the points and then reverse back in or uh, run the train round the, the engine round here, but it would still have to go out to here to come back in. I cannot see that that would be operationally acceptable to block that line when you've got a uh, passing loop here. So if I need to move that point down here further, what I might do is just extend this loop round the corner a bit further, um, and then I don't know, put move the whole thing round, move it hold down a bit more to see if that works I don't know this as I said in the previous video um, I need to play with it to find out what's going on right that just leaves us with the estate managers yard and this is version 3 as shown to you at the end of the last video it's actually version 3.2 the original version 3 didn't allow for the buildings uh, if I bring you up here carefully just so you can see this is a mock-up of the engine uh, the engineering shed for the carriages now originally I didn't put any space in between these tracks and what was happening was when I put that down this track here actually ended up running underneath that wall and that's totally unacceptable it wouldn't work with it so it's either truncate it or spread it apart so this track can now run at the side of it and there's room to get a train in there and there's room either side so it doesn't crash with the walls. Apart from that this is the same. Right so we've touched on two areas we've got the natural features the landscape and we've got a hard feature which is the track. Um, 
they're independent they're not independent they fit in with each other the the railway's got to run within the scenery the scenery's got to work with the railway um people all the time say it's got to be the railway looks like it was put into the scenery rather than the scenery around there so we've got to get that balance right and um the other balance we've got to get right is any buildings we're going to put in um are they going to work are they going to look right are they going to be functional for the environment that they're in and the people that live in the area are they going to like the estate managers yard have we got the right buildings are they going to form the functions that the estate and the railway need it's model railways a lot of people and the wife included she started off she's changing her mind now but people think of a model railway as being a train set you know it's stuck on a board just playing with trains but it's not when you look at it what we get out of it and what we put into it we've got topography which is my new favorite word we've got town planning you know what buildings can go where will they fit in what's the access going to be like and do they need services like water gas electricity was those services available in a village in the 1920s there's so much to put into this and so much to work around um, it is a vast subject and you've got all the research to do as well. Um, no wonder we get so involved in it. It could take over our lives if we let it or if the wives let us. Anyway, getting back to the buildings. I want to do buildings that I found on journeys and trips and holidays. Maybe seen in books. Um, there is one building that I saw in a film and I managed to get a screenshot of that. So I've got an idea of the sort of buildings I want. The architecture I've already set down in... Um, the estate manager's yard is that Victorian brick industrial revolution look and um, I've found some nice uh, buildings I can do that with. The village is the same, it's been there for years, there could, there's buildings that could be two, three hundred years old, there's buildings that might be ten years old but for ten years in my time that's the 1910s and the 1920s so you're looking at buildings the how they're going to fit in how were they connected to the building next door if the building next door is like 50 100 years older so the way i want to do it is that i've taken those ideas that i found in books and films and stuff and i've started using a cad program and now i say start using a cad program um, i've made a bit of progress i had that three or four months where i couldn't face coming into the shed let alone doing any work on the railway but i wasn't idle i wasn't just sitting at home i was still working on railway model related stuff. So I've used this CAD program and I think it's called LibreCAD. My memory for names is terrible. I won't go into LibreCAD because there is a bloke called James who has got a channel and it's Bexhill West and I will put a link or the, 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 the details of his videos there. But he did four or five videos that went through LibreCAD and how it works and it's brilliant. Um, I got into that and start using it and learning it. And then Michael at Chandwell has started using um, Inkscape, is it, that free software? And he gets brilliant, absolutely wonderful results from that. But I've already started planning my, a lot of my buildings using LibreCAD, so I'm going to continue that. But with LibreCAD, I've done the, the building plans, then I've printed them onto sticky labels. And where Michael at Chandwell seems to uh, favour Weetabix, I've used cornflake boxes. So I've made up mocks of the buildings. Um, this one's actually a butcher shop in Leighton Buzzard, which isn't too far away from here. And then I've got other ones. This one was a... I don't know where that one was from. But uh, again, it's another one I found that I like. And there's another one here, which is another shop in Leighton Buzzard. But as you can see, they're all different heights. And the idea is that if you do mock-ups of them, you can then place them on the layout decide how they fit together, how they work, you know, do they look right together. You can move them around, you can have them in the line, you can bend them into shape, you can then work out where your roads are going to go, how far back they're going to go, are you going to have room for details at the back, at the front, it's a minefield, you know, as I said, town planning. So that for me is the next stage as well, is to work out where my models are going to go. Also for the um, estate managers area, I've done a mock-up of the good shed that I want to use. This is the office building that I'm going to do in the corner with some small workshops. Um, this one was actually based on Gladstone pottery I think and it was in Gladstone pottery. It's actually at 90 degrees but I've 
splayed it apart. Oh, it's a U-shaped building. I splayed it apart to fit in the corner. So it's things like that. So I can play with these, I can move them around, I can make sure they're going to fit in and what room I've got. And then as I say, from there I can then work out the access points, you know, where the roads are going to run, where do I need bridges, you know, will, will it work or will it end up kind of being squashed together. So um, yeah, planning a model railway is not easy. You can do it scribbling on a piece of paper, which is I started out doing. I've got a nice little sketch of what I wanted to do which was four years ago, five years ago, even probably longer than that. And it's developed so much from there. So, yeah, we've got... Um, the hobby's huge. It really is huge. So, um, yeah, I think I've got enough to be getting on with. So I'm going to wind this up because I've done a lot of waffling in it, but you've seen my thought process on how I want to plan it so that everything comes together so it looks like it belongs... It, these days you must have driven around, you see a new housing estate, it's plonked in the middle of nowhere, it looks so wrong. You drive into a village and it fits, you know, or an old town, and the different bits of history fit together, and the railway fits in, and the roads fit in, and the people fit in, and that's what I'm aiming for. Quick break there, I thought the missus was outside, but um, I think it was a bird scurrying across the roof rather than her outside. Anyway, she's not there. Right, so I'm going to wind it up there. Um... I've definitely got, the plan is, is to get the baseball done underneath the estate manager's yard. That's got to be done. I've got to find out what the heights are and the levels are. I've got to make sure the trains run underneath it. And that what that's the important one. Once that's in place, I can then work on this one, work out how it matches up with the estate manager's yard, with the Helix and with uh, Holton St Barnabas. And also with this line through to Holton St Mary. Once that's in place, I then have to make the decision of whether I'm going uphill with this running on the hillside or having that in the valley. The thing that's catching in my mind is it'd be nice to develop this with some houses and stuff. Um, I was away on holiday a few months ago and I saw a nice little scene that would fit in nicely here that was kind of down the hill. But I'm not sure there's room to do it and achieve it. The other thing is... The baseboard I originally did for here was up at this height and it works out quite nicely with a road and a path and the chapel on it. But I could put a chapel on here. I've got to make up my mind. I'll get that one done and while I'm doing that one, I'll start to think what I'm going to do here. Thank you for listening to me waffle along. Um, I hope you got something out of it. At least you can see where my mind's going and not how I'm developing my railway. I hope that's useful to you. Probably you've already got yours built and done a far better job than me. But uh, I'm learning. As I say, I know nothing and I'm learning. So until next time, goodbye for now.